Some cheat in the customs, some rob the excise. But he who robs both is esteemed most wise. Church wardens too prudent to hazard the halter, as yet only ventured to steal from the altar. But now to get gold, they may be more bold. Well, and good morning, and welcome to our first fall. scoundrel short. I got a little tired of doing mailbag, so I thought I would just uh, jump into some things that I personally like doing. Now, right now, um, by myself uh, here in Stopo Abbey, that's our secret hideout. <laughs> Today, we're conveniently located across the hall from Susan's sewing room. It's prom season, so I don't see much of Susan lately. I'm pretty sure there's somebody else in there with her because the language coming from that room, it's just not something I expect to hear from my wife. But it's still language, and that's the subject of today's Scoundrel Shorts language. Anybody who's known me more than, oh, it ended three minutes. I love language. I love the idea of language, where it came from, the etymology of language. Um, I just, I think, I find language is fascinating, sometimes to the point where I do things I shouldn't, like use the word Stygian in an Easter service. I don't know why, it just seemed to fit. But that got me thinking about some common languages and some common words that we use, like good, merry, and mean. And, well, that's what we thought we'd talk about today. Welcome. Of course, today, the word good, is it means good. It means, hey, great, it's wonderful, uh, good food, uh, good, good day, whatever. It just means happy, whatever. The word itself, though... Uh, it's, it's Germanic in origin, uh, dates back from the, really the 10th, 11th century, uh, but it didn't necessarily mean what it means today. It, uh, as, as far as referring to places or things, it, it meant valuable, it meant fine, it meant uh, what we would call high quality. As far as people goes, it was more of a religious word that referenced to things like, um, like pious uh, or um, holy. A good example is, is Valak the Good, uh, we better known him as Good King Wenceslas. Uh, he was serving, uh, well, he was born in 907, died in 935. He was the uh, Duke of Bohemia, of course, from the Christmas Carol, which is actually pretty darn close to what he was doing. He was a very giving man. Uh, he was very pious, very honorable to the church, and believed very strongly in giving to other people. It does fit the idea of him being good, being pious, uh, as right. By the 12th century, it's, it's kind of a word that means um, friendly or gracious, it also meant long, as in referring to time. It could be a good amount of time. We still use that phrase today. It meant a long amount of time, a long time, more than 25 or 30 minutes. Um, probably about as long as my wife would spend on the phone talking to Carol. Um, as Frank can probably attest to, that becomes a good long time. Uh, by the 14th century, though, we also see it referred to of money. Uh, a good coin would be considered one that's unbased or not shaved. It was not uncommon in this time period, obviously through m into the 18th century, where you would take a piece of coin, and because it was the value was in the metal itself, that they would shave edges of the coin to the point where the coin would become de debased or devalued because it just didn't weigh as much as it was supposed to. That'll lead us into some problems that will eventually lead into the Transportation Act that some of you have read about, we've talked about before, uh, where they were debasing the currency by 1690. Less than 10% of all English coins were good. The rest of them had been shaved at some point or another. By the 15th century, we start seeing referred to as worker, skilled workers. Uh, if they were a good worker, it doesn't mean that they were good on time. It was means they were good at their job. They were very skilled at their job. So a good worker was someone who knew how to do everything and could do it right and could produce quality work. In the late 16th century, um, it starts being referred to children as well-behaved. Well-behaved children is a good child. Today, a good child is, well, any child is good because we can't call them anything but good because we'd hurt their little psyches. But back in the 16th century, children didn't have psyches, so we refer to them as good or just little rotten people. So yeah, it does mean, the word does mean a lot of different things. It depends on how you use it. So my suggest is if we're going to use the word good, be very careful when we're, you're referring to how good the waitress was at the restaurant last night.
So if we were to take the word Mary, uh, it's a Middle English word. It uh, referred to something as pleasing or sweet, delightful would be the thing. Uh, I guess it's not really how we would use it today. Maybe pleasing, but not necessarily sweet or delightful. It's not really the word we'd use today. Though the Germanic roots of this word was actually short, meant slow, can't, well, short, slow, I guess. That actually traced back to the ancient Greek word, which just meant slow. So if you were merry, uh, you were a sloth. You were slow. Sloth being the animal, not slovenly. Another word, but I wasn't talking about that one today. It, but it also refers to just the opposite, because later on in history, we'll see that we refer to something as a merry clip. It means fast. So we went from the German, the ancient Greeks referring to it as slow to the English word merry in the 17th and 18th century as, as fast. We've gone on a merry clip, a fast clip. It also meant tipsy, as in drunkards. So they were married men, they were drunkards. And good, you know, that brings us up to Robin Hood and his merry band. I mean, you could use them as merry as gaily or happily dressed, funny, or they could be drunk peasant thieves because they were a merry band. Um, when you think about that, it made more sense for Robin Hood to be with a merry band that were pretty much drunk peasant thieves because they were drunk peasant thieves. That's where the whole canting crew idea came from. Professional thieves, professional beggars, professional thieves. Now, some people will say that it also, the word merry can mean mighty. Uh, as I'm looking through, I really can't find that. Though, if you think about it, if we're going to use that idea that it means mighty in comparison to Robin Hood, well, we can think of them being mighty men, which makes a lot more sense than these two examples. Now, the other reason that we we think, too, that it doesn't necessarily mean mighty, um, and it doesn't necessarily mean rich and wealthy because... Robin and his merry band, they robbed from the rich and gave to the poor. The frat boys were rich, so I don't think they were a merry band of frat boys. And the idea of robbing from the rich and giving to the poor, why would you do it the other way around? Uh, the Robin Hood stories are going to be getting the beginning of the Canting Crew tales, the stories of the band of, of vagrants, the professional thieves, professional gamblers, the professional people like like we've shown in Scoundrel's Alley. So the idea of robbing from the rich and giving to the poor makes us think that Robin's merry band were drunk peasant thieves. Finally, that brings us to the to the usage of the word uh, mean. A means to an end, you're a mean person. Um, I got a mean look. Uh, the etymology of this word is Old English. It, uh, it originally means to intend. You mean to do something. You intend to mean something. We still use that today. And in the German, uh, the old Germanic, it was to mind. I'm going to mind something. Which mean mine. I'm going to mind it as in I'm going to watch it. By In the 13th century, we also see it as a music term. Uh, it refers to middle. Uh, in the middle of the, of the tone, what we today would call a quarter tone, if you're if you're into if you know music, if you understand music, sharp slats in between um, a whole tone, a half tone, in between those two tones, in between a C and a C sharp, there's actually a quarter tone that would be called the the mean tone, the middle tone of C. We don't see it much today. Uh, I get yelled at for using double sharps and double flats, so I'm not about to use a mean tone in anything that I do. Or my wife would really come unglued. Anyway, in the 12th century, the term means to hold in common, uh, owned by everybody. Uh, the mean cup of the family meant that the cup the family was had one cup, un not unusual. Very few families had cups for everybody, but the mean cup would have been the universal cup that the whole family used. You could almost go back and say that uh, in the Last Supper, uh, the cup that Christ drank from was the mean cup, not because it was nasty or mean, uh, but it was the universal cup. It was the cup that they all shared. Uh, I'm not sure Parson will start talking about the mean cup at our next communion service, which is coming up in a couple of weeks in, in Martin Station, if anyone's around. Uh, and that's another story, though. By the 14th century, mean has come to, to mean poor quality. If something is mean, it just means it's lesser quality. It doesn't have the quality and quantity of, of the great stuff such as you're getting here today. So it's... Uh, and in 1666, we start to see a reference to it towards people. 
destitute of honor, the low-minded, the poor, the criminal, the outcasts. They became mean, not because they were mean or nasty. A lot of these people were put in situations that they just that's all they could do. But they were referred to as mean because they were they were the poor. Uh, they were to the upper class, the top ten percent of the world. The other ninety percent were mean, just because we had nothing. And the idea of mean being poor quality actually survives longer in America than it does in in England, uh, in reference to people and usually white uh, laborers. They were usually the white laborers that were considered even by the slaves to be lower than them to be even lower than the slaves, yeah, the forced indentured, the criminal transportation. Uh, it was still in common usage up through the Civil War. You can find this uh, noted a lot in um, James Sterling wrote a book in 15, 1857 called uh, Letters from the Slave States. So the idea of mean referring to people uh, of lesser, I don't know quality, but just of lesser stature and stat status in life were, were mean. Uh, and oddly enough, what it means today of being petty, cruel, uh, disobliging, the idea of a mean person, that's actually criminal slang from the, uh, around 1840. So it comes out of our world, of the canting crew world. So uh, even the words today, uh, you know, we can trace a lot of them back into the idea of criminal element that uh, we've tried to show. I do want to make this short because this is a scoundrel short. So I do want to invite you uh, to any comments, questions, conundrums, any suggestions that doesn't mention my parentage. Uh, feel free to uh, drop me a line at eric at scoundrelsalley.net. We'll put that down there in the link below. Uh, more information about us can be found at uh, www.scoundrelsalley.net. Other than that, uh, have, a, have a wonderful day. And uh, as I want to say, as the character Christopher Bodkin, don't play this for money. Thanks. We'll see you the next time. But he who else wrote this esteem those wise Church wardens too prudent to hazard the halter Has yet only ventured to steal from the altar But now to get gold they may be more bold And rob on the highway since Jonathan's cold For blues can sharp pen life has set ye at ease And every man round me may rob